Let's get into the word. Y'all ready for the word? Yes. Okay, okay we're going to break it down. God is good. God is a good God. Amen? Amen. He is so good. So good. We've been doing a series. Who remembers what the name of the series is that we've been doing? The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Amen? Now, overall, our theme has been this. This, this, this last uh, fall, coming in this fall season is what? Stay ready so you don't have to what? Get ready. Amen? And I really believe that sometimes we got to go back and, and learn uh, some of the things that we have learned in the past to make sure that we're fortified, staying fortified in what we know for the, the attacks that come ahead. Amen? And so we've been talking about the, the power of forgiveness, and there's a power in forgiveness. Amen? So as our custom, again, amen, as they are breaking down, I want you to turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Find a neighbor first. You got to find somebody. Look them in, the, in their eyes. Come on, find somebody that you don't normally talk to. Say, neighbor, it is so good to see you. You look great. Absolutely marvelous. You look splendid. Fabulous. You really put that thing together. But I got to let you know something. There is power in forgiveness. Amen. Now find somebody else. Find somebody else. Find somebody else. Say, neighbor, you look great too. You did that thing that you do, that you do when you do it. You look absolutely fabulous, spectacular. But I got to let you know, there's a power that comes from walking in forgiveness. Amen. Turn to somebody else. We got to get a third person. We got to get a third person. Can't be complete. Let every word be established by two or three witnesses. We got to get a third. Say, neighbor, you look absolutely marvelous too. This must be a marvelous church. <laughs> you look awesome, spectacular, fabulous. And I just got to let you know something. There's a power that comes from walking in forgiveness. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for you all. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you about the power of forgiveness. We're in part three of the power of forgiveness. You can go back online and our YouTube channel, type in the word Become Church. One word, and it will come up, the, the previous lessons, part one and part two. If you'd be so kind to scan the QR code, you get an outline of the lesson for today. Amen? So you can go in that way. If I don't get to cover everything, you will have it to study during the week. We are a teaching church. We believe the power of teaching, not only preaching the word, but teaching the word. Amen? Preaching will save you. Teaching will keep you. Amen? Preaching will save you. That'll get you saved, get you a good shout in, and get you down on the altar. But teaching is what's going to sustain and keep you with your walk with God. Amen? And I want you to be like those Berean Christians, to study the Word, to see what I'm saying is so. Amen? As some of you may see, I'm wearing my, my, one of my favorite teams, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Amen? It is uh, athletic day for the day, and for the next couple of weeks, if you were saying you can wear your sports jerseys or your shirts, amen? and represents your team. Amen. My team is playing an old rivalry today, so I wanted to make sure I support them as they whoop up on the Cowboys today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hopefully we don't have any Cowboy fans in the audience, and so I give early condolences and prayers toward you. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 through 15, and Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 2 is where the text is going to be, and I'm going to ask you to stand one last time. One last time. And this is what's going to happen. I'm going to read the Word. We're going to read the Word together is our, is our customs. We're going to pray. And then you're going to sit down, and I'm going to do the rest of the heavy lifting, lifting for the service to the end of the service till, till we have our altar call. Amen? So we're going to be, again, the power of forgiveness. Everybody got the QR code? I see a couple of y'all still scanning. 
Amen. Get that? And we're going to get right into the Word. Again, welcome Facebook Live and YouTube Live family. We appreciate you tuning in to us. Amen. Several of you tell me, say, when you don't see me at church, Pastor, I'm watching online, and I believe you. Amen? So feel free to interact with me. I'm going to tune you in right here on my Facebook Live as well, and I'll try to like, like you online as well. Amen? And if any of you want to tune in, you can too. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. And then after that, we're going to read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. And if you could be so kind to go ahead, if you're watching me online on Facebook Live, I want you all to interact and engage with me. I want you to go ahead and type that in the comment section. Amen. And that way I know that you're actively listening to me if you're able to do that. If you're at a point, amen, if you're not at work, I don't want to get you in trouble if you're at work, but I want to make sure you can, can, can stay in tune with us. Amen. Are y'all ready to read the word? I can't hear you. I need Leon, I need Leon squared here because y'all getting y'all being conservative. He usually shakes y'all. Uh, are y'all ready to read the word? Okay, let's read the word. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Here we go. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. Hope y'all got that. Let's keep reading. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Say a lot, just think on that. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 in the New American Standard Bible. Let's read. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up an offering and a sacrifice to God as a what? Fragrant aroma. Amen. Bow your heads, please. Father, we just thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. God, every declaration of your word, your word is spirit and it's life. You, let, you say in your word that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. Lord, set us free on today. Speak to our hearts like only you can. Hide us behind the cross. We plead the blood of Jesus over everything, even as we minister on forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness of any sin we may have committed, Lord, known and unknown. And Lord, I just even say, God, let Howard sit down. Holy Spirit, you stand up. Holy Spirit, you have a way of speaking to each and every person individually like they're the only ones in the room. Would you do that for us today? And if you do, when you do that, we will give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. One more time for the Son. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. As always, I like to give you how many things you have to learn when I'm preaching? At least one thing. Turn your name and say, neighbor, that's one thing. One thing. One thing you got to learn. I want you to get this in your spirits. Good to see Jennifer. Good to see Yasmin this morning. I want you to get this in your spirits. The unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die from it. Let me say that again. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die from it. Amen? Say it with me now. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die from it. One, one, more, one more time for the Holy Ghost. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die from it. One more time for the Son. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die from it. That's our whole foundation of this teaching here. Amen? Unforgiveness hurts me. It hurts you. It doesn't hurt the other person. And sometimes we think when we hold things, anger, resentment, 
that we're actually hurting the other person when in actuality we're hurting ourselves. We're carrying a load that God has not called us to carry. Are y'all with me? Let's keep going. Some of you are hearing this for the first time, so bear with me. We're going to review a little bit and get you, catch you up to where we are right now. Amen? One thing we talked about last week is beware of what? Lip service. Beware of acting like you're forgiving, but not forgiving. Amen? Because then, guess what? It's like expecting the benefits of forgiveness without truly forgiving those who have wronged us. I forgive you, but you're still being mean. Still, you know. Are y'all with me? Yeah, I forgive you. Forget, I forgive you is almost like a cuss word to you. Mm-hmm. I got your number. No, it's I forgive you. I I. I Thank you for giving me this experience. Are y'all with me? And we talked about the balance of that in, the, in both of these teachings, that when somebody, when you forgive somebody, it doesn't mean that you have to keep being a doormat for them to step on you. you. You hopefully are learning from those experiences that if somebody, and we used an example, come on up here, William, come, quickly, quickly. You'll be, we had Howard last week, you'll be, me and my example, I said if he is uh, the one that keeps offending me, and he's supposed to be my friend, and he keeps hitting me. Come on, hit me. Boom, boom. He just hit me. I'm all in range of it. He say, keeps saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, keep, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he keeps hitting me, right? And I, I forgive you. I'm sorry. 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 I forgive you. Keep hitting. I'm sorry. I forgive, but he ain't hitting me no more. Why? Because I set a boundary. Are y'all with me? Some of us, keep hitting, don't stop hitting. Some of us just walk right, right on back in there. I'm sorry, get closer. Ooh, you're hurting me. Why are you hurting me? I don't know why I'm sorry. God, help me to get rid Move out the way. Are y'all with me? So he can keep on hitting, but it ain't touching me. Say, neighbor. Come on, turn you and say, neighbor. Can't touch this. Can't touch forgiveness. You guys, you, got, you just right here, let somebody just, boom, just hitting you, hitting you, hitting you. Popping, <laughs> I saw you popping a lot. Yeah, popping a lot. No, step out of that. Step out of that. Set your boundary. Love God and love yourself. The Bible says, love your neighbor. Love the Lord that God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Sometimes we don't even love ourselves. You got to love yourself enough to say, you know what? This is not beneficial for me. This is not working for me. And this is not glorifying God. So guess what? I'm going to get out of the range. And I'm going to love you from here. I didn't say stop loving. I, you, I, look, I can smile from here. I can give you an air hug from here. Are y'all with me? I can stay out of range. And if he's hitting this, I, some people, you know, I may, I may, he, why he, I may just, hey, give him a, a hug there. Are y'all with me? But you don't have to come and keep taking the same abuse. So I want to give the balance to forgive. Are y'all with me? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for him. Help me. Thank you for that, William. Amen. See, a lot of times when we're dealing with the sin of unforgiveness, and unforgiveness is a sin, and it's a sin that hurts us. Who's it hurt? Me. You. Amen. Turn your name. Say, neighbor. Pastor's not talking about you. He's talking about us. It hurts all of us. If I doesn't matter what my title is, no matter if I have bishop, prophet, doctor, evangelist of the most holy, five baptized, Pentecostal, it doesn't matter what the title is. Unforgiveness stinks. Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, it all stinks because it's not the heart of God. See, the real issue many times when we're dealing with unforgiveness is not that we can't forgive, it's that we think we shouldn't have to forgive. We think we shouldn't have to. we already been through something. They already took us through something. Now you want me to forgive you? We, I, am the victim. When the Bible says that you're not a victim, you are a victor. That you're called to walk in victory. And sometimes you got to call those things that be not as though they were, because you're walking by faith and not by sight. 
how things are perceived by the senses, so you have it before you have it. Are y'all with me? We're not victims. Sometimes we feel like, why should we do things that are uncomfortable for us? It's so uncomfortable to forgive past hour. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know my family. You don't know them people. You don't know my family. Oh. You got the whole stomp dance about them. You know how we do we, we don't want to do something. All we're doing is having an adult temper tantrum. Uh, don't want to. We don't want to forgive. Now, I know this is not none of you all, but retain this message because it may be somebody that you know that needs to hear this. But just by chance, it is some of you all. Receive this word and understand God wants to bring a change. And thirdly, we feel, and this is what this is the kicker. We really feel like they're getting off what? Free. I ain't going to let you just get out. You can't just do this to me and, and, and get away with it. I know God says vengeance is mine, but we change that to vengeance is mine. <laughs> and it's supposed to be vengeance is God's. See, when you make it about you, you make yourself an idol. And my God, our God, is in the idol crushing business. So we wonder why we start feeling like we're drinking that poison and we begin to die. That person's living their life, having the fun, and we begin to die. Because it ain't fair, God, because you kill. Oh, God said, let it go. Let's, are y'all getting something out of this? Let's go. Ephesians 5, chapter 1, verses 2. Review again. It says what? Therefore, when we see a therefore, what? We got to look at what it's. God's getting ready to drop something heavy on us. He said, I want you to do what I'm about to say. Paul is talking to the church of Ephesus. He says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. God has a master. No, he has a doctorate in forgiveness. That's the whole essence of our faith. And look, it says what? And walk in hatred. Walk in fear. Walk in doubt. It says none of those things. It says walk in love. Just as what? Christ also loved you in what? Gave himself up for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Many of us cannot receive the fullness of God's love toward us because we don't forgive other people. Because we can't fathom the depth of of God's love in our own minds. You got to get the tape. <laughs> Many of us, I'm just joking. Many of us can't fathom the depths of God's love because we're so busy trying to earn it. Got to go to church. Got to fast. Got to pray. No, if you don't do another thing, God loves you and he forgave you. I know that blows your mind. It blows my mind. It blows my absolute mind because I'm not like that in myself. I feel like I got to work my way. No, true Christianity is Christ coming to us and taking us where he is. Anything else is dead religion. Anything else. Look at every other form of religion. Uh, Bad theology is always, oh, I got to work my way to God. I got to work, penance. I got to work, got to work. No, it says faith is what works is there, but it's working through the faith. I do nice things for my wife because I love my wife. I'm not doing things so I can love. Are y'all with me? See, then I'm a robot. I'm just doing things. Hey, I love you. 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 Honey, do you know I love you? Honey, do you know I love you? That get old after a while, won't it? But if I look at her and say, baby, I love you. You know, the way you did that for me, did it? I appreciate that. Are y'all with me? A sincerity from the heart. That's what God wants. God doesn't want robots. He wants you to understand the depths of his love that he has for you. So he says, walk in love just as Christ also loved you. Gave himself up for you. He died for us, an offering as a sacrifice. And it smells good. And then I ask you this, and I want you to say, neighbor, I got one more question for you. Say, neighbor. How's your love life? Huh? How's your forgiveness? 
Hey, Amen. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that agape love. I'm talking about that unconditional love. I'm, I, now, notice, I didn't say how your lust life was. See how the world got that mixed up? Because we equate love with sex. And here's a news flash for the whole church. Sex is not love. Lust is not love. We define lust as lust seeks to get at the expense of others. Love seeks to give at the expense of self. You got to know that. Somebody always keeping a record of what you do wrong and right. Newsflash for those, for my singles, they don't love you. Well, I did this for you, and you need to do this for me. I did this. Okay, now, <laughs> wait a minute. First Corinthians 13 says love keeps what? No record of wrong. Are y'all with me? And when you love somebody, you know, they can do you wrong. You don't even think about it. You just keep on doing it. Because that's how that, that, that love, are y'all with me? Again, I'm not talking about abuse now where somebody's abusing you. That's a different thing. That means you just, you, you, you operating on, on, on foolishness. I'm talking about when there's a marriage covenant and there's love or you're working toward marriage and that person is giving themselves to you and you're giving, they're giving you 100% and you're giving 100%. Are y'all with me? I'm not talking about you giving 100, he giving 10. Or she giving, or she, <laughs> are y'all with me? Or he's giving 100 and she's giving 10. No, I'm talking about when you're giving 100% of yourselves and you've done all the best of what you can do. Amen? See, God's called us to produce the fruit of the Spirit. I put it up there so you can see. What is it? Love. Joy. See, it started with love, though, right? I really believe when you walk in love, you get some joy. I really believe when you get some joy, because the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength, the Bible says in Nehemiah. When you get some joy... You get some what? Peace. And when you have some peace, you can have some what? Patience. When you have some patience, then you end up being what? Kind. Because you realize you start seeing yourself in other people. Are you with me? And then you start what, experiencing what? God's what? Goodness. But how many of you got to give goodness before you get goodness? Hey, don't be speaking in tongues to me if you ain't going to be giving me some fruit of the Spirit. Leave that to yourself. Are y'all with me? Take your cup, blah, 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 take it somewhere else. And learn some love, some peace, some patience, some kindness, some goodness, some faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Are y'all with me? And he says, against such there is no what? Did I make that up? The Word of God says it. I wish I was that good, but I'm not. Are y'all with me? See, when we hold on to hard feelings, we build up a rationale against forgiveness in our own minds. Putting it together logically, piece by piece. You know, we'll, we're, like, <laughs> we're like attorneys. Like, we make reasons of why we got to hold on to this baggage. Normally, I show a picture of the baggage of a lady carrying all these bags. Some of y'all know that. And I, I've, in, in times past, when I've taught on this, I've had luggages on the stage. And I have different ones holding this luggage of, of, of hurt, of abuse. And we're wondering why we can't get anywhere in life. Because where God's calling us to go, we're trying to take everything with us. You only can carry but so much. You only have so much spiritual bandwidth in your life. See, understand, okay, listen to me. Come on, listen to me. Wake up, listen to me real quickly. It's all about the dash. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the end of the day when it's all over, on that epitaph, on that cemetery, there's going to be a dash. Your name, the date you were born, and the, da and the date you ended, and the dash. And the dash represents who you were in between birthday and death date. Paul says, teach me to number my days that I may live according to your wisdom. Why are you wasting your time hurting people? Some of us are getting in the same hurtful relationships over and over and over again because we haven't released the last knuckleheads. So you attract what you are. You're broken, you attract broken people. The more you get healed, you attract healed Are y'all with me? You attract what you are. 
That's what somebody says. Ain't no good men out here. Ain't no good women out here. Well, I'll be in the barber shop and I hear people talking because they got the men in the way. I say, well, check yourself or you wreck yourself. Maybe there's some work that God wants to do with you. And if you let him do that work in you, maybe you'll draw. Are y'all with me? See, trash draws flies. I'm just saying. Trash draws flies all day long. Are y'all with me? And so you got to be willing to take out the trash in your life. Let me tell you something. I'm not calling you trash. I'm saying we all have trash of unforgiveness and hurt and pains that we got to give to the Father. Are y'all with me? So he can make you whole inside. See, we make the case seem airtight. We, we, you know, we can lock ourselves in why we need to stay angry and mad and in unforgiveness. I mean, we just get on our, get our, get, we, we get our little pity party. We get in our pity party chair. We sit, we fold our arms. Good things never happen to me. God Lord always blessing everybody else. So I better stick out for myself. <laughs> Ain't nobody else looking out for me. Nobody, they praying for that sister. They didn't pray for me. They didn't give them something. They didn't give me nothing. Not even counting the blessing that God sent. How many know God can use so many venues to bless you? You're looking at what some sister and brother so and so got, not realizing what you got right around you. Are y'all with me? Silencing conflictive arguments, not listening to God's voice. What do you mean? God's trying to show you different things that He's moving, and you just shut those people down in your life. You don't want to hear them. You only want to hear people that's going to have the pity party. People say, well, sister, you know, brother, you know, God is moving behind. Shut. I don't see him. Simply summon them all up with one conclusive statement. I can't. I won't. I choose not to forgive. When you don't forgive people, you don't see the humanity that's in them. And you make yourself God. Because you, give, you embrace a principle that's greater than the eternal. When he's created everything and he says, I release you. I love you. So hence we take the poison. Amen? Did you get something out of that? I'm going to finish. All of these rationale, are, y- are, y- are y'all getting something out of this? Okay, the Holy, okay. All these rational objections arise from what? a a basic misunderstanding of the concept of forgiveness. Before we define the word biblically, let's state what forgiveness is not. And this is what we covered four things last week. It is not denying the reality of your pain. Uh Uh-oh, wait, do. It is not denying the reality of your pain. Doesn't mean when when you forgive somebody, it's not saying they didn't hurt you. I'm forgiving you because you did hurt me. Are y'all with me? And what am I saying? You ready to bring that, bring that, come on up here with that jersey. I shouldn't let you come up here with that Ravens jersey on. Being a Steelers fan, you shouldn't even be sharing the stage with me. But you are my son, so. What am I saying? I'm saying, if he, if he hurt me with that Ravens jersey, if he was hurting me right now, thank you for giving me this humbling experience. Thank you. Because it's working humility and brokenness in me. Thank you. That's all forgiveness is. It's about, guess what? It's going to work. You're, you're, you're teaching me how I need to treat people in the future. You're giving me a life lesson so I can help somebody else out when I see them being mistreated. Are y'all with me? You're teaching me what I don't want in my next marriage. You're teaching me what I don't want in my next relationship. You're teaching me how not to parent if you had rough childhood. Are y'all with me? You're teaching me how not to to be, do what you did to me. It's no greater lesson than a life lesson. The question is, did you learn from it? Experience is only experience. I'm sorry, let me say this. No, no. It's an experience. You're going to keep on getting hit. You know? You can experience getting hit. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, he's starting to learn from it. Oh, get on out. Are y'all with me? Papa didn't raise no fool, right? He learned. Get out the way. He got some wisdom. Notice he didn't pray and say, God, 
how do I need to get out the way? <laughs> Are y'all with me? God gives you free will. Some of us say, yeah, come on. They're praying, boom, boom, getting hit. Why? Lord, why am I getting hit? I don't know why I'm getting hit. Oh, God. Oh, let me prophesy. Oh, please move the hit away. Move the hit away. Just move. Change your number. Block the person. God, if you don't want them to call me, please let them stop calling. Bring. Lord, if you don't want me to go tonight, please, 1 a.m. in the morning, bring. Got your bag ready? Faith without works is it. Some of you got to shut some stuff off. Secondly, it's not letting, thank you, give me a hand clap. It's not letting your offender off the hook. You're not letting them off the hook. Thirdly, it's not blaming you, the victim. It's not saying it's your fault. You say that I'm... Beyond that, I love the Dylan Roof situation. I don't love that that happened, but I love how those victims of there came less, less than 72 hours, went to the court and says, we release you, we forgive you. That's at the South Carolina massacre where the guy came up and shot up the church. He meant in the name of Christian nationalism during the Obama administration. I believe it was during the Obama administration. He came, it's about eight years ago, he came and he shot up the church, had Bible study with them, sat with them. They shared the plan of salvation with them. Then he put out his gun and began to shoot. And those that lived beyond it, they came within less than 72 hours and said, we release you, we forgive you. When I've taught on this, sometimes I show the video of that, of them releasing him one by one, saying, and they say, we forgive you because we're not going to have that poison trapped in our lives. Are you with me? They say, we're not, gonna, we, say, we're not forgiving you because it's easy. We're forgiving you because we don't want this poison to be passed down on our children and our children's children. Are y'all with me? Some of us are living through some poison that's been passed down through our generation. Our parents were hurt, so they hurt us. Guess what? And because they never forgive, guess what? They keep hurting and hurting. You become what you don't forgive. You become what you don't forgive. You become that very person. You see it all the time. You see where that, that, that the son of an alcoholic becomes a what? Alcoholic. Because guess what? His dad beat him. And it, it, are you with me? He says, that'll never be me. You see the artist, I'm thinking about Chris Brown, he watched his mom get beaten by her lover. One of my favorite, I liked it, I love him. But you saw him do the same thing because there wasn't a release. See, Will Smith, watch this. Are y'all with me? Let's, let's, get, let's, let's move out of that. Let's define, are y'all ready to find forgiveness? Are y'all getting something out of this? Are y'all ready to break through in this area? Let's go. The Greek word forgiveness, translate forgive, means a release from an obligation, most commonly a financial obligation or debt. And I got about five minutes, man. And we'll, we'll start it. Amen? Okay. What is it? What does it mean? It means a release from an obligation, most commonly a financial obligation or debt. Webster talks about releasing anger, releasing despair. Are y'all with me? I'm trying to find out. I actually had it pulled up. We were looking at so much this morning because we had a great time in our leadership meeting. But it says, to cease to feel resentment against an offender. Every time you look at the person, you're getting them mad. You forgave him, but you, you say you forgave him. To give up resentment or claim to requital, to, to grant relief of a payment. See, the debt is that they hurt you, and you choose to let them go. Amen? Now, let's look at this. We talked about this a little bit last week in Matthew chapter 8, verse 22. We're going to look at the rest of the power. Everybody say the rest of the story. We're going to look at the first part of it, and, and next week we'll look at the second part. Okay? It says, Jesus answers Peter questions about forgiveness, anticipating Subject objections. He says, how many times, Peter says, just to go back and review, how many times should I forgive my neighbor? Seven times? Because Peter thought he was like, you know, 
Back in the day, there were theologians that thought that you need to forgive a person three times. So, you know, Peter, he's always going to try to outdo what was going on there in, in Psalm Noble. And he's talking about in a day. Seven times? And seven represents the number of what? Godly perfection. Right? Seven day God rest, everything. Are y'all with me? But what does Jesus say? He trumps, he says what? Seven times what? Seventy. Ten, the number for responsibility. Seven times ten is seventy. Ten times that, another seven. In one day. So 490 times a day. How's that fit for your record, married couples? You go crazy trying to keep up with that. It may be right at four. <laughs> How many times? 499. Be right at 488 and the day's over. <laughs> but you, you just went crazy trying to keep up with it. Waiting, waiting so that you wouldn't have to forgive. <laughs> you see how we do? Matthew 18, 23 through 27, New Living Translation. It says, for this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to what? Bring his accounts up to date with what? Servants who had borrowed money from him. So Jesus, you know, whenever he wanted to get a, a point, a, a spiritual principle through to his people, his disciples, he would use natural means or natural stories to get that principle. 24 verses, says, in the process, one of his debtors was brought in with, who owed him what? How much? Millions. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars in the hole. He couldn't pay, so the king ordered that he, his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. Go ahead and sell your family to because I need my money. I need my money. But the man fell down before the king, begged him, oh, sir, be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Sounds a little bit like us a little bit, doesn't it? When we come to Christ. I'm talking when you really come. I'm not talking about when you just said, Lord, come into my life. But when you got desperate and you really came to him, not that counterfeit conversion. Well, you just repeat the prayer. You know, how many of you know when you got saved public, uh, did a public one time and then you really got saved? When the crisis happened in your life and you had that one-on-one -on -one experience with God? Fell down before the king and begged him, oh, sir, be patient with me and I will what? Pay it all. Then the king was filled with what? Pity or mercy for him. And he released him and forgave his debt and, re and released my offender. He released him. Doesn't that sound like salvation? Amen? Although the servant had no way to repay small about such a huge debt, he begs for just a little more time. And what a sad sight seeing begging for the king and what beautiful thing the king did because he felt what? compassion for the man. Now, this is a perfect illustration of forgiveness. Here's three things I want you to get out. The servant owed a very real debt to the king. When somebody hurts you, they owe you a debt. The king ever had every right to expect the repayment of the debt. But the king what? Did anybody make him do it? God is never going to make you forgive. You got to choose to. Volunteer release the servant from his obligation, covered the loss himself. Amen? And I got to wrap it up right there. Next week, we're going to look at what this man did after he had been forgiven. Not next week, but the week after next. It reminds me a little bit of how we are sometimes. God forgives us of millions, and then we can't release them from thousands. Because I think in this, the next one, we're going to see that he had, God only owed him thousands, and he couldn't release them. Small amount. God forgave him of millions. Oh, we got a little more time. God forgave him of millions, but he couldn't release him of thousands. Give me back one more time. We got a little more time. I thought, I, I thought the next group was here. Okay. Can I read this real quickly and wrap it up? Are y'all getting something out of this? Okay, here we go. If I'm going too long, how let me know. But when the man left the king, he went to fellow servants who owed him a few thousand dollars. A few thousands. Now, see, I want you to see, I'm not making this up. This is the Word. The Word is better than any reality show, any soap opera, anything you, I'm telling you, the Word, if you read the Word, the Word will read you. Yeah. Better than Atlanta Housewives. 
Are y'all with me? Yeah. Be, be, love and hip hop. I mean, I, I don't know. It's better than basketball. It's better. It's got it all. But when the man left King, he went to the fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. Better than love, love after lockup. 29th verse. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But look what this guy did. The guy that just had been forgiven. Are you ready? Okay. We're wrapping it up. Oh, I, I thought there was another group here. Amen. What's the one thing we got to get? Forgiveness is like what? Drinking poison and expecting the other person to die in return. Amen? Amen. When it's killing you. Every head bow, every eye closed. Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for this time in the Word. And we pray, God, that, Lord, help us to be more like you. If you're in here, you heard this Word, and you, two things. If you feel like, Lord, I need, I need to go deeper in my forgiveness. I need to go deeper in my love walk. I want you to raise your hand. Forget about who's around you. Just raise your hand. Also, if you're here and you don't know the Lord, I want you to raise your hand. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer, and I'm going to pray a prayer for those that need, need to go deeper in their walk of forgiveness. Say, dear Lord, come into my life. Save me, God. Change me from the inside out. I receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and leader in my life. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, I pray for all those that need deeper levels of forgiveness. We raise our hands to you, Lord, in the sign of surrender and say, Lord, help us to see ourselves in other people. Help us to understand that once we release them and forgive them, God, that you'll give us compassion. But God, help us to, to, to do it by faith so that we won't create a pattern of trauma in our lives, which will stop the drama in our lives. God, we break the pattern on today in the name of Jesus, the blood of God, the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. We break its power and we pray for release and relief in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to just repeat that and say, say, Lord, I forgive and name the people you forgive. Name them. Go on. Say it out loud. Touch them, Lord. I forgive them. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, let me say this. Grab somebody's hand. We got to close out. I want you to do this. Go ahead and make our circle. Come on out. Come on, members. Y'all know what to do. The new people don't know what to do. They're looking at you like, amen. This is what you got to do now. I wish I could say it just stops right there and it's done. Sometimes you got to keep releasing people. I remember one time, I remember I had somebody hurt me. I had to keep releasing them like <laughs> every, one time it was like an hour. I know I did at least 60 times. Every minute I was doing it. Lord, I forgive them. Because then the enemy would remind me of what they did to me and how painful it was. And I start reliving it. And I start getting mad. Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I released them. Lord, I, re I had a, a, a call. Are y'all with me? Sometimes it's a continual thing. You know, and this is how you know, when you start bringing it up again and you find your blood pressure getting up there, you remember when they did that to me, <laughs> you start reliving it and your heartbeat start getting heavy and you, are y'all with me? And your voice start raising and say, I thought you'd forget. I did! Sometimes you got to let it go. You got to let it go. Now I'm not saying it's not going to happen overnight, but you got to be willing to let it go. Because all that going on in your physical body ain't hurting them. It's hurting you. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for these champions. These are your men and women of God. We release our lives to you. Let us be the light that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. And in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen and amen. 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 Give God some praise. If we can hug at least five people and you are dismissed.
Maybe think I'm on up here real quick. Good morning or good afternoon. I just want to thank everybody who was so gracious to pray for me and my family as my sister went home to be with the Lord this past Friday. And I'm just thankful for her life. That she no longer has to suffer, but she's in total healing. And I thank you for your prayers throughout her healing journey. And that she is peacefully with the Father right now. So I thank you for that. We'll be traveling this upcoming weekend to uh, be with her in our home going. And we just appreciate your prayers as we travel there. Amen. Amen. All right, so make sure you hug her real good today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you this to take back. Well, give that to him. And um, we just... Did I put it up there? We have, again, we didn't plan this trip. <laughs> Can't never plan for death. But if you want to sow a seed to this, and it's those that are online, you can cash at me at dollar sign HK Sanders 2. Dollar sign HK Sanders 2. I'm going to tell you in advance every seed that you sow is to us. We see, again, we're going there to minister as well to the family. Just love up on them and be a blessing and just be family. So, Dollar sign HK Sanders too. If you could sow a seed to that, I would greatly appreciate it. Amen. And uh, we'll be there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. So coming back on Sunday or Mon Sunday and Monday. So appreciate your prayers. Please keep us covered, and and just we love you. Amen. And make sure you give Lady T a big hug. Everybody, make sure you give a. A, good, a big hug for me, amen? Amen. amen? amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for her. Upcoming events, again, if you want to be baptized, please let us know. I want to get that information as well. Keep it going for me. And then you see just all the different events that are happening during the week. You can take a screenshot if you watch it online or even in the sanctuary. Wednesday Night Live, as well as our leadership meeting. Leadership meeting has been real good. 11.30 a.m. We've been dealing with on Christian nationalism. If you want to learn about that, come on out. And the danger it poses to the cross. Morning prayer every morning, 6.30 a.m. 402-871-8321. Also, our, our wild meeting is going to be pushed back this month. So we'll be letting you know where that is. Movement, third Saturday. We're going to be at the IHOP. We're either going to be the third or the fourth Saturday. I know the ladies are having a, a tea on the third Saturday. So we may need to move it to the fourth Saturday, but I want to connect with you all and find out. But it's going to be at IHOP. So get ready to get your pancakes on. Amen. International House of Pancakes in Ackworth. They built a new one. We want to, we've want been there once with a few of the handful of the men. We want to baptize that place with the men of God coming. Amen. Amen. Give the praise team my hand clap. We got Alexis and Thomas and William and Asaph. Ace on guitar. Howie on the drums. Josh on the keys. On the sound booth, we got Leon and Ariana and Caleb. We thank God for you all. We're going to get it done without you. Believe us in worship. 